Men, gather round. OG Silver back here. Hey, my Manosphere men, let me say this to you first and foremost. Happy New Year to you. May 2018. Bring all of the dreams and hopes and desires that you have within your heart. May they be fulfilled. And speaking of which, in my opinion, as the title of this video says, the only way that they will be fulfilled is if you are to sit down and to make a New Year's resolution for the year 2018. The reason this is important, guys, is because as the new year comes along, you have an opportunity to, let's say, to right the wrongs. Because as human beings, as men, we're frail. Like, I know we all want to think we're supermen. We're invincible. But if you had the unfortunate incident of being shot or stabbed or knocked out countless times like I have, then you know that you are not infallible. You are not Superman. You are not invincible. I don't give a fuck how many movies you watch, how many games you, you play, third-party shooters, first-party shooters, doesn't matter to me. And I pray that a lot of you guys out there haven't had to experience physical violence where you come to understand that your life, man, is it's fleeting, man. Your life is fragile. And that's the reason that I'm making this video for Manosphere, man. Because I think in this country, a lot of men, especially younger men, have actually lost the true meaning of what it is to be a man. And that's why in this video, I'm going to share with you my thoughts and perceptions and experiences of being an OG. But why it's important for you to actually have a New Year's resolution. And I just wanted to start off by saying, in the past, I never believed in the New Year's resolution. I always thought that was for weak people that didn't know about self-mastery and being in charge of your life, right? But I think that over the years, and this is where wisdom comes in, man. You know, you can have ego and intelligence, right? And a puffed-up sense of self, kind of being like a female, right? Because women have this puffed up sense of self like they overvalue themselves and I think it's good to value yourself you gotta have self worth you gotta have self love right but when you think that your value is higher than the work that you have put in I call that delusional fellas so with that being said you know most of the men that I associate with and I look up to the most are self-made like you know and it's okay if you if you come from having a silver spoon in your mouth or the golden spoon or whatever you want to call it like you come from the affluent family it's okay i'm not judging i just find that the men that i associate with the self-made men they're hard and they're tough and they're resilient right they remind me of victor franco man who survived the nazi concentration camps right and i find that the third and fourth generation American kids where their their dad's a doctor or maybe a lawyer or he's a very successful businessman. You know, the kids are soft, man. Even if he's a fucking entertainer or an actor, the kids are soft because they don't have the work ethic. They don't have the resilience. They don't have the toughness. They don't have the self-sufficiency they don't have the the buck stops with me and so i doubt that any of those guys are listening to my videos because they're rich and they you know one thing about rich dudes man they, they feel like they know everything and just because you're rich dude doesn't mean that you're not vulnerable to the, the scavenges of life bro <laughs> but i'm not gonna go there we're gonna keep this video positive so here are the reasons that I have documented that uh, Manosphere men, men who are looking to be in charge of their own lives and their own destinies, must have New Year resolutions. I think I'm going to start from the top. I think one of the main reasons is to 
you have an opportunity, this is a brand new year, right? You have an opportunity to start from scratch and reset yourself, you know, reset the clock, so to speak, reset your mindset, you know what I'm saying? Reset your focus, right? And I think that's important, you know, because we all make mistakes and maybe we've gotten into some bad habits or maybe we've gotten into some bad relationships, a dead end job, whatever the situation may be. Now you have an excuse to reset. And anybody who questions you, you just be like, hey, it's my New Year's resolution. Everybody can relate to that. So no matter whether they agree with it or not, no matter they want to make fun of you or not, you now have a what I call a scapegoat. You now have a reason to change drastically. Right? So let's use it, guys. The next one um, on the list is what I call reflection. So you have an opportunity to reflect on your life and if you're not where you would like to be with this reset that we just talked about, you can go ahead and chart out a new plan, chart out a new path, chart out a new destiny and proceed forward boldly. Because each year you get older no one knows what the future holds, but he who looks to be the catalyst of his own change can look to dictate or at least guide his future in a direction that is positive and beneficial for himself. The next one on the list is you get an opportunity to ponder and um, I think, in my opinion, the difference between reflection and ponder, reflection is just an overall, let's just say like a 10,000 foot view, you reflect on the year, whereas ponder, you really stop and you dial into each different interaction. Like I'll give an example, and this is a good one to help you guys understand. So, I am a very tall, big muscular masculine looking dude like when you look at me there is nothing pretty about me at all you know uh, my teeth are crooked and spaced and gapped and uneven from being kicked in the mouth and punched in the mouth a lot and I'm not bragging them you know I'm just sharing with you uh, my nose has been broken several times my jaw has been broken several times you know I got a fucking cauliflower here I got stitches all in my face. Well, you know, I don't know if you've ever had stitches, but you can see. It's like like when you look at the Frankenstein monster, you can tell he's stitched together. I got stitches, like, all over my face, man. My lip busted, my eyes busted, whatever. And so my face is not a work of art. It's not beautiful at all, you know. And uh, I basically have no neck. I got traps up to my ears, very broad, muscular shoulders, just big old dude right so just work out a lot just dig it I work I, I enjoy working out more than I do having sex so for those of you who can't wrap your head around that um, look into some of my own videos about self mastery you know and self love and self improvement because a woman doesn't define me I define myself and so but I'm a I'm a pretty big guy I'm like 6'4 I fluctuate between like 240 and 250 depending on how tightly you know I, I dial into my diet because sometimes I just have a propensity for fucking pizza man fucking lasagna and spaghetti and shit right? so anyway but you can look at me and tell I'm not to be fucked with man but in the corporate office I've learned to carry myself in such a way with my dress I've learned body language cues, like when I talk to smaller men, I turn sideways, I don't look at them head on, I look at them sideways, I um, take the bass out of my voice, I, uh, I take the the raspiness out of my voice, right, I kind of talk like this, you know, good morning, how are you today, like that. So I was in the office, and uh, just so you guys know, I'm multi-ethnic, man, so, you know, I'm part European, I'm part um, Indian, and I'm part Spanish and I'm part African, right? So I fit in anywhere. But in the corporate office, 
and this is not a racial statement because I'm just sharing with you what happened, but there was this like smaller Caucasian gentleman, you know, I'm 6'4", he was about, and I'm not exaggerating him to be honest here, he's about, he's about 5'4", but it's for the sake of this conversation, let me give him the benefit of the doubt, maybe he had an elevator shoe on, he's 5'6". And he was my coworker. He's my peer. So anyway, what we had to do was um, we had to design um, a new location for the the organization so that we can have redundancy and failover. So we had to build a whole another mirror site for the entire organization. So in case of an earthquake in California. On the East Coast, we would have a fellower. So we were in charge of like designing that and, and down to the very, you know, electricity, the power, uh, firewalls, the routers, the switches, the servers, all that, you know, like some serious architecture. So this guy, man, he had some kind of a disease like irritable bowel syndrome or whatever. He couldn't eat. And uh, because of that, he was like not only 5'4". Well, we agreed that he's 5'6", but he was 5'6". But he's like maybe a buck. I don't even know if he was a buck, man. Let's just say, for the sake of this argument, um, okay, let's say he was 120. And like I said to you, I'm 250, 240 on a bad, on a good day, and 250 on a bad day. And I work out a lot. Now he, he, some, some guys work out. They don't have the, they didn't win the genetic lottery like I did. Which, you know, I'm just being honest with you. A lot of stuff. The way you look comes down to genetics, because there's a lot of guys I know that only lift weights and they're they're swole, they're huge. And I know some guys lift weights, take steroids, and fucking pre-workout and growth hormone, they look like shit. But he's one of those guys. He didn't win the genetic lottery. He had a, some kind of disease where he couldn't eat and he couldn't poop or something. So anyway, dude, he was just like. One time we went on a trip and uh, we we uh, we didn't bunk together, but. We drove together, and it was hot, man. So I, I put on shorts and a tank top. So when I when I have on my business casual gear at work, you kind of look at me like, oh, he's just a kind of a tall, big spaghetti eating dude. But when I got on shorts and a tank top, you can kind of see like this fucking dude. He fucking. This is what guys in the office used to tell me. Hey, dude, do you just fucking live in the weight room? Which is not true. I don't live in the weight room, but just all the years of playing sports and stuff, you know. So I just wanted to paint that picture where this guy looks like and he had all this Captain America paraphernalia because he was hoping there was some secret formula he could drink or a process that would give him muscles. But the guy was a hater. So anyway, man, uh, we were working on the, he, I was working on one the wing and the, the, the belly, he's working on another wing and the dude starts like raising his voice to me, dude, like, you know. Hey man, like you know, I told you specifically to color coordinate and everything, and you know, use the color scheme that I gave you. And uh, to be honest with you, back then when I was working with the guy, I, I used to do martial arts competitions. And uh, I'm just being honest here, guys. So you can take your own take on things and view me however you want. But whenever I competed in martial arts, I would drop down to like the one, the 181 class. And the reason being is that when you start getting it over 181, like you go into the 198s and the 220s and the fucking 242s, a lot of those guys are juiced up on steroids. It's not that I'm afraid of them. It's just like, I don't know, I think that's cheating. I don't want to, that's unfair competition because steroids do work. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. So I dropped down. I was on a diet trying to get down to the 181 pound class. So I was on a low carb diet, right? I had a headache, so the dude was screaming at me. So I screamed back at him. I said, I said, bro. Worry about what the fuck you're doing. Don't worry about what the fuck I'm doing. You're not my fucking boss, dude. Just do your own fucking shit, dude. Get the fuck out of here, little dude. I call him little dude. So the next thing I know, the uh, the 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 uh, director of the department comes to me and, and and asks me to come with with them. So we go over to HR, and I was given um, what was that? Um, I was told that I made threats of fuck physical bodily harm to the dude, blah, 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 this and this and that, right? So long story short, I was fired on the spot, man. So here's where reflection, here's where here's where pondering comes in. So reflection is like looking over the year, 
2017, I had a cool job. I had a couple jobs and everything, but I had a job to lost. Here's pondering. You, you really look and ponder the interaction, the specific interaction that caused you the illness or to not have the result that you were looking for. And then you just look at it and you say to yourself, how could I have done that differently, right? And you want to look at any interaction from 2017 that did not give you the result, the positive result that you wanted, right? And then from there, um, you can make the necessary course corrections. So I think that's very important for your New Year's resolution. And uh, the next one I wanted to talk about is a reboot, like a reboot. And so what a reboot is, it's like, you know how when you go to sleep every night, you your your old cells die and your new cells, you have new cells born. So you basically reborn. So what I practice, guys, what I think is good for a New Year's resolution is you just reboot your whole self. You just reboot and you start over. And you want to do like a computer does with the power of self test, like the post test. Every day for 2018 when you wake up, you know, you want to say to yourself, who am I and what do I represent and what do I want in my life? And this gives you a clarity and a focus where nothing can distract you because I think a lot of reasons that um, people aren't successful is because they don't focus on what's important to them. They get distracted by the immediate or the things that make them feel good, right? And so... Uh, I think it's important for your uh, your 2018 New Year's resolution to reboot yourself and just become like you're reborn, right? So let's just say, you know, what would what would you dream if you knew that you could not fail, right? You wanna you wanna just act like you're reborn and just go for what you know, right? And I think the main thing is. Um, You want to remember this here. There's a book that I read. It's called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. I think a lot of times as men and uh, competitive men, we see the realities of life that things are not fair. And we have fears. We have fears about certain things. And this is what I've learned from reading that book. Like I said, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. What, what separates a brave man from a scared man, we all feel fear. It's just a brave man takes action anyway. It's called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. And also have an acronym from Brian Tracy. It's called Fear is False Evidence Appearing Real. A lot of times we make up fears in our own head. I'll give you an example, guys. This is for most of the men listening to this from the Manosphere. Have you ever been at work, man, and you feel like, man, I'm busting my ass. I'm working, bringing these projects in. Man, I want to raise, right? So here's fear. You sit there and you say to yourself, and I'm, I'm not saying all you guys do it, but let's just say, follow me for the sake of this conversation. But some guys would be like, oh man, I'm afraid to go in the boss's office because he might be busy and I want to disturb him. And then, you know, what if he doesn't think my performance is that great that it merits a raise? And, you know, what if he's got some other ideas? That, what if he feels like I'm asking for too much money and I get fired? All these things are fears, and a lot of them are self-generated. You know, we we kind of we kind of overthink things too much. While I think that thinking is good, I think it's important to do to take action, right? Like Anthony Robbins says, take action. Like you think about something, take immediate action as quickly as you can, because speed, man, is very important. So I think that's important, guys, to not let fear-based thinking freeze you in your tracks, right? And another thing about a New Year's resolution, guys, that's important, right? Is, and I think what is one of the main things that I saved almost for last is basically a New Year's resolution, all you're practicing is what's called goal setting. And I think goal setting is very important. I've listened to information from both... Um, Brian Tracy and Jim Rohn and even Anthony Robbins and uh, there's a guy named Darren Hardy and it's important for you to set goals for your self-improvement because there's a thing that says what gets measured gets done and I know there's a lot of a lot of men man like to just have stuff in their head 
And I'm not saying you're like a, a legend in your own mind or anything like that, but they like to just, you know, me man, me do, and you got stuff in your head, which is cool, but it's good to write stuff down because what it, what it does is make sure you're staying on track and you're also on point, right? So all, the main thing for having a New Year's resolution is at the beginning of the year, you are putting markers in the sand for where you want to be, where you want to go, what you want to accomplish. And then you have your goals as milestones to get you there, right? So I'll give you an example. Um, I'm in uh, Southern California, Los Angeles area. But let's say my goal is to get to San Francisco, right? Then the first thing I need to do is I need to map it out. And then I have these milestones, so I'm going from, I'm going from like Los Angeles to like, uh, let's just say, um, Santa Barbara to San Luis Obispo uh, to uh, Monterey uh, to Gilroy to San Jose, uh, then to Santa Clara, then to San Francisco, right? That was just an example. So the same thing here, what a New Year's resolution is allows you to set down your goals and your milestones and markers so that you can then start trekking forward with that every day when you wake up as a reboot, you're reborn, and you say to yourself, who am I, what do I represent, what do I want out of life? And you look at your written goal list, right? And according to Brian Tracy, you should look at your goals daily like even Jim Rohn says the first thing you do when you wake up, whether you say prayers or stretch or do yoga, Pilates, whatever you do, exercise. Before you get going on your day, you should pull out your uh, your written goals list and look and see what your goals are so you can stay on point. And the next, uh, the next one's on my list is time management. And this is why New Year's resolution is important, guys. Is because time is the most valuable commodity that we have in this life. Time is so vibrant. I think he even made a movie, right? Where it's, uh, you know, it's in the future, of course. And then uh, instead of having currency, we have this this time, and you can you can add time to a person's life through a chip or some kind of a technology. And then you can also get time subtracted, so you don't want that, right? So, you want to learn to utilize your time in a way where you get the biggest bang on your buck, the biggest return on your investment. And what that means is, as you live your day, you want to look to become very efficient so that anything that you are doing, any activity that you are doing that is not moving you toward your goals of keeping your New Year's resolution, you want to minimize the time doing that. I mean, it's cool to have some downtime or some veg time or some play time it's, it's, it's very healthy but I, I would suggest that you practice the 80 20 rule meaning that 80 percent of the time you are focused on the goals that you have set to yourself for yourself for your new year's resolution and 20 percent of your time is for entertainment and just fluff and stuff right because the one thing that's very important guys is in this life as men, we are trailblazers. We accomplish things, we build things, right? This is what makes us men. Men are hunter-gatherers. We go out into the wild. Women are nurturers, man. That's just their roles, right? And as a man of fair man, once you really understand what your role is, don't get caught up in this metrosexual, transsexual thing. Your role is to go out and to conquer. And so you have to conquer things in your own life. And that's why it's important to practice Kanai, which is constant and never-ending improvement. Because what happens, guys, I just want it to be clear. If you're not constantly improving, like Darren Hardy says, and it doesn't have to be something mind-mental. It could just be a little thing. I'll give you an example. Let's just say my New Year's resolution, right, is to... Um, let me see. I'm, I'm just thinking about this on the fly here. Um, let's see. Okay. 
let's say my New Year's resolution is to lose 50 pounds. Now, to some people, they may say, that's a lot of weight, right? And I've lost it, unfortunately. I've gained it back, lost it, gained it back. But um, I think long-term, if you plan long-term, I think that's a very doable goal, and I'll give you an example. So this is how you would break it down, guys. There's 12 months in a year, right? And so then what you want to do is you want to take uh, 50. Let's say you want to take 50. And, um, <coughs> excuse me, you want to divide that by 12, right? How come my calculator's not coming up, man? It kills me. Oh, here it is right here. So here it is, Sarah guys. So you want to take 50 and divide it by 12. Check this out, man. So my calculator's coming up here. So I'm putting 50 divided by 12. All right, guys, so look. That is 4.1 pounds a month, dude. And that's what I mean by constant and never-ending improvement. And it's very small, small and manageable. So if you lose them four pounds a month, that's one pound a week, man. Anybody can do that. Like, you can very easily do that just cutting out your sodas, man. You know, or like... I got an associate at work. He eats ice. He's a he's a a, a a bucket of ice cream every night, man. You can just cut down to a pint, right? And then you can just do that for a while, and then you can get to a point where you just do a pint every other night. Then you can get to a where you just do a pint once a week, right? There's all kind of uh, articles written on how to, you know, do incremental goals accomplishments, right? But that's the main thing because he who is not improving, you're not just stagnant, guys. You're actually regressing because your compatriots or your 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 modern day competitors or your peers, right, or your constituents, they're on the path of improvement, man. So if you're not improving, not only are you stagnant, you're regressing because they're passing you by. And like we said, time is the one commodity that you cannot get back. And uh, I would encourage you guys to look up Darren Hardy, The Compound Effect. He's got some really good information on, um, you know, small incremental improvements, right? And so in parting, guys, what I wanted to say to you is, I think the biggest reason that it's important for a Manosphere men to have a New Year's resolution is a word that we overlooked but it's a very big word and it's called self-love and a lot of men don't like to use that word love a lot of men don't believe that you know they don't believe in love or they don't know how to show love they think that it's not manly but I, I'm here to tell you there's this belief that men are logical and women are emotional that is not 100% true men are emotional as well we are emotional creatures we are human beings the only difference is that men use logic to rationalize or to think through their emotions. Why do you think they have a thing called a crime of passion? Because if you come home from work, and for those of you who still believe in marriage and things like that, you come home from work and the, the milkman is banging the fucking shit out of your old lady, man. And you know, you, you pull in from work early, like you forgot your briefcase and so you get to work and you need it for a presentation. So then you come home at 2 in the afternoon when you normally get home at 6 p.m. And you don't tell your wife because you don't want to disturb her. Or you don't think she's going to be home, right? And then you pull up at 2. There's a strange car in the driveway with your wife. And you're thinking, oh, are they having like a tea party or something? And you pull up and everything. You got one of those electrical vehicles. And it doesn't make noise. You pull up and you open the door because you got the key. And then you just see you here, oh, give it to me, big daddy, like that. And you're fucking the fuck is she watching porn? And you walk up the steps and you see some dude just laying pipe to your old lady, bro. Just laying pipe to her. Matter of fact, she's tied up, right? Like fucking 50 Shades of Grace down. He's just laying pipe to her, bro. And, you know, you just out of, uh, just out of rage or disbelief, you grab the lamp, bro, and you bust him in the back of his head, bro, and you kill him. Those are called crimes of passion because men are emotional too, but you did not have time to logically process 
the situation before you react it emotionally like a woman does. So with that being said, guys, it's very important that you practice self-love. Because if you don't learn how to love yourself, then you really can't love anyone else. Till next time, OG Severback out.